Uh, as far as the uh, Senate health care reform bill, Senate Majority, Le Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell did not bring this to a vote because he does not have the vote thus far. But Mitch McConnell is a very savvy and experienced politician. Do you think he still could get the votes and gather the votes to get this health care reform bill passed? I think it's going to be very difficult for Senator McConnell to get the votes together to get this passed. Um, the bottom line is, is that uh, the House uh, health care bill stripped 23 million Americans from their health care coverage and the Senate uh, package did not do a whole lot better. It would have stripped 21 uh, million people from their health care coverage. Um, and I think it's just a very delicate balance and I think being able to uh, bring together the different factions of his caucus uh, is just a very difficult task and uh, I don't think he's going to be able to do it. I hope he doesn't do it because it would be a bad thing for the American people. Right, and Congressman, uh, no one really thinks that Obamacare is perfect in the way it is right now. Certainly there needs to be amendments. Are you for working with Republicans to try and at least amend Obamacare to make it better? I, 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 without question, but I think that the only way you're going to be able to fix uh, the things about Obamacare that need to be fixed if it's done in a bipartisan fashion and throughout this process since the beginning of this year, uh, Republicans in the House and Republicans in the Senate um, have pushed forward their package without any Democratic input. Uh, so I think this may be a good moment for uh, Republican leaders in both the House and the Senate uh, to put together working groups with uh, Democratic members on the House side. It would be from our Energy and Commerce Committee, for example, Frank Pallone from New Jersey or our, our, in our very own Gene Green from Houston, um, because th these are, these are uh, people that have been working on health care for a very long time during their congressional tenures, uh, and they're sensible. I work with them, and I think that uh, if you put people like Congressman Pallone and Congressman Green at the table with Republican leadership, that we can uh, come up with a package uh, that will take care of some of the problems that we have had with Obamacare. Well, if we could play devil's advocate here, and suppose it does pass, who in the Valley specifically, what people... Sorry, what was that, Eddie? I want to play devil's advocate here, and let's just suppose, hypothetically, that this reform bill does pass. Who in the Valley do you think would be affected the most by this reform health care bill? Um, the Congressional Budget Office just came out with their plan, uh, their assessment of the Senate plan just yesterday. I have not had a chance to review it fully, but it's not that much different than the House package. And the people that would have gotten hit the most uh, in the House package uh, would have been uh, the poor and the elderly. And I assume uh, that the Senate package hit, would have hit those same people the hardest. All right, well, thank you, Congressman. Well, civil rights groups here in the Valley are up in arms about the Sanctuary Cities Bill. In fact, a few cities here in the Valley have joined the lawsuit against SB4. However, the Justice Department itself is backing lawmakers who are behind Senate Bill 4. Uh, do you think there is a realistic chance of actually stopping this law before it goes into effect on September 1st? Um, I'm not sure about that, Eddie. What I can tell you is um, that had I been in the state legislature, I would have joined all of our uh, House and, and Senate uh, members uh, from the Rio Grande Valley who do sit in the state legislature in their opposition to Senate Bill 4. Um, you know, it, 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 it passed, the governor signed it, um, and now it has the support of uh, the Trump administration. Um, so, you know, at this point, I think that uh, we have, those of us who oppose uh, Senate Bill 4, uh, have to put our faith in the justice system and uh, the judges who are being asked to determine whether or not Senate Bill 4 uh, is justifiable or not. But, Congressman, do you think there's a chance they were asking San Antonio Judge Orlando Garcia to put it on hold 
before it goes into effect on September 1st. Do you think there's a chance to at least delay it and maybe gain more traction after that? It's difficult for me to say, you know, as a, as a practicing lawyer before coming to um, United States Congress, um, I, I, you know, if I've had, if I'd had the chance to legally anal to analyze uh, the procedural and legal aspects of that case, I might be in a better position uh, to answer your question, but I just haven't had a chance to do that in this particular instance. Um, if, if I do get a chance to do it, I'll be happy to revisit that question. Right, Congressman, two more short questions. But of course, we are hopeful. That we Go ahead. No, but obviously we are hopeful uh, that the federal. I didn't even realize it was uh, Judge Orlando Garcia, but I mean, you know, obviously we are hopeful that uh, the, that Judge Garcia in this particular instance will rule in favor of those uh, municipalities and units of government that have filed a lawsuit against the state of Texas. All right, Congressman, two more short questions here. As you know, there has been an. Uh, increased violence south of the border in the state of Tamaulipas. Uh, we interviewed the mayor of Rio Bravo uh, just yesterday, and he seems to have no solutions other than to hope and pray that the violence stops. What are your concerns about violence south of the border right now? Well, uh, you know, violence in the state of Tamaulipas has been one of the most important issues uh, to me since I got elected to Congress, uh, what we are finding uh, at this particular moment in time uh, is that um, the violence in the city of Matamoros over the last six months to a year um, has actually um, gotten a has, has actually gotten a lot better. Uh, but in the, the town of Rio Bravo and in uh, and in Reynosa, uh, the last six months to a year, we've seen. None of that has been alleviated, and a lot, a lot of that has to do with uh, cartel factions uh, who are uh, fighting for, for control of those individual territories. Um, it, it is a, um, you know, it is something that is extremely important to all of us uh, who live in the Rio Grande Valley. There's, you know, we have 1.3 million people live in the Rio Grande Valley, and two million uh, brothers and sisters and cousins and family members that live right on the other side of the border. And uh, it's a very difficult issue. I mean, it, it, uh, uh, I hope that, uh, that leaders on the Mexican side of the border uh, do not lose faith because, um, at least for now, in the city of Matamoros, uh, we're in a much better place uh, than we were a year ago. And hopefully, uh, you know, as we move into the future, that uh, things will settle down in Rio Bravo and Reynosa so that, um, you know, that, so that people can li live in peace. Uh, on, on that side of the border as well. And Congressman, you have been an opponent of the border wall since the onset. Uh, President Trump recently came out and said uh, he thought that solar panels on a border wall are the solution. Your thoughts on that? Well, I, I really do not uh, have any faith or any trust uh, in President Trump when it comes to issues uh, with respect to the border or U.S.-Mexican relations. So I don't put a whole lot of credibility uh, in um, his suggestion uh, that solar panels are, are the answer. And, and, and I've heard from no other source that suggests uh, that some sort of solar panel system uh, is, is the answer to this. We're going to continue uh, to do everything we can to fight uh, every effort. Uh, by this administration and uh, anybody here in Washington uh, who suggests that uh, there ought to be funding for any sort of border wall or a fence, because to me, a wall is a fence, a fence is the wall, and if it were up to me, I would bulldoze the existing border wall. And Congressman, finally, I just want to reiterate our initial question to you, and that is, Senate Majority, Le Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is a very savvy, very experienced politician, do you think he still can gather the votes needed in the next couple of weeks, perhaps after the July 4th break, to still pass this health care reform bill? Well, I hope not, and I don't think he'll be able to do that. Uh, but you have to remember uh, that on the House side, uh, Speaker Ryan uh, 
was not able to bring up his version uh, to the floor the first time, uh, but a few weeks went by, and in the House side, they were able to finally make, uh, you know, make it through on the second go around. I hope that doesn't happen in the Senate. Uh, there's no denying that Sen that Senator McConnell is a uh, savvy tactician uh, when it comes to the legislative process, um, uh, but you know, right now you have. Uh, Republican moderates uh, who are, are opposed to the bill. Uh, uh, you have conservatives in the Republican Party who are opposed to the bill. And I think it's just a very delicate dance. And uh, I, I just think he's got a, a very difficult path forward. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad because uh, the, the last thing we need is to pass uh, this Trump care uh, in whatever version it may come before us, whether it's the House version or the Senate version. And finally, do you think that all of these uh, protests and people showing up to their congressmen and senators' offices uh, to protest uh, this health care reform bill is actually making a difference? It, it's hard to tell. I've, I've seen the protests. Um, I think it's important for people to exercise their uh, freedom of speech and their right to assemble. Um, but at the end of the day, um, it's... Uh, it, it, for example, Senator Heller in, in Nevada has been subject to uh, a, a television attacks in his home states from uh, Republican PACs who support the bill. Um, and so I think that every member of Congress and every senator really is um, really a product of their district or their state they represent. And I think it really depends on what uh, these individual senators are hearing from their constituents back home. And since you're still there, I'll ask you one more question. Mitch McConnell, from what we understand, was trying to gather support uh, before this weekend, before they get to the July 4th break. Do you think that that will happen, or do you th think that uh, he might call this to a vote sometime after the uh, July 4th break? I, I, I don't think there's much chance that Senator McConnell is going to be able to bring anything up uh, before the July 4th break. Um, that We were notified in the House today that votes were canceled on Friday, so most members of the United States House of Representatives will be leaving town tomorrow. Um, I'm, I haven't really followed what's happening on the Senate side, but I doubt there's much chance there'll be any movement on Senate health care uh, before uh, we leave this week, and uh, hopefully that will remain the same when we get back. Okay, thank you so much, Congressman, for joining us and uh, appreciate right your in. time. And we will let you get back to the business of the country. Thank you.